Front page of the New York Times says Trump has few ways to overturn his conviction as a New York felon, folks. Interesting article, and I want to share that with you and some of the analysis there. But I think the overarching point that I want to make throughout all of this, folks, is that Donald Trump did affect the outcome of the 2016 election. And because he did affect the outcome of the 2016 election, we can't say for sure that he would have been president, elected president, had this information come out, right? That he had had an affair with Stormy Daniels. We can't say that he would have been elected president. Nobody can say that because Donald Trump killed that story and affected the outcome of an election. And that, to me, is what makes this so egregious, folks, is that Donald Trump may not have been there for four years had the story been allowed to filter out through the American population. And they could have made perhaps a, a, a better decision on who should be president because of this information. We can't forget that, folks. And to hear all of these Republicans out there fighting, you know, that this is a scam to me, the premise is, yes, he did affect the outcome of the election. So take a look at this article. So the article quotes Donald Trump as saying, this is long from over. He said last Thursday, Mr. Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee, is banking on the jury not having the final word on the case. He's already outlined a plan to appeal the verdict that on Friday he labeled as a scam. But even if the former and possibly future president could persuade voters to ignore his conviction, the appellate courts might not be so sympathetic. The former president's supporters are calling on the U.S. Supreme Court to intervene, though that's highly unlikely. In a more likely appeal to a New York court, Mr. Trump would have avenues to attack the convictions, the experts said, but far fewer than he has claimed. The experts noted that the judge, whose rulings helped shape the case, stripped some of the prosecution's most precarious arguments and evidence from the trial. Mark Zotterer, a veteran New York litigator who sits on a committee that screens applicants for the, the same court that will hear Mr. Trump's appeal, said that Justice Mershon avoided pitfalls that often doom convictions. This case has none of the usual red flags for reversal on appeal, Mr. Zotterer said. The judge's demeanor was flawless. Mr. Trump could challenge the foundation of the prosecution's case. Mr. Trump's lawyers note that Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan district attorney, used a novel theory to charge Mr. Trump with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. In New York, that crime is a misdemeanor unless the records were faked to conceal another crime. To elevate the charges to felonies, Mr. Bragg argued that Mr. Trump had falsified the records to cover up violations of a little-known state law against conspiring to win an election by unlawful means. In an appeal, Mr. Trump's lawyers are expected to argue that Mr. Bragg inappropriately stretched the state election law, a convoluted one at that, to cover a federal campaign. And they could claim that the false records law itself does not apply to Mr. Trump's case. But now, just like every other criminal defendant in New York, the deck is stacked against him. Appeals courts typically frown on overturning jury decisions, barring some glaring error or misconduct. The judge could sentence him to as long as four years in prison or impose only probation. The sentencing will start a 30-day clock for Mr. Trump to file a notice of appeal. Mr. Trump might also have a final option, the U.S. Supreme Court. Mr. Trump, who already tried and failed to move the case to a federal court, could try again if he were elected. And as I mentioned in a previous podcast, Rolling Stone reporting has indicated that Donald Trump has been calling Republican legislators to try to achieve legislation that would allow him to do just that, to move cases from the state courts to the federal courts so the Department of Justice could then kill the case. The article goes on to say it would be a long shot. Procedurally, it is exceedingly difficult for a state defendant to reach the Supreme Court without exhausting state appeals. And in an appearance on Fox News on Friday, the Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, argued that the justices should take up Mr. Trump's cause. I think the justices on the court, I know many of them personally, I think they're deeply concerned, said Mr. Johnson, a Trump ally. 
I think they'll set this straight, but it's going to take a while. Defendants routinely premise appeals on a judge's decision about how much prosecutors may cross-examine them. They also often argue that judges have allowed evidence beyond the scope of, of the charges. But Justice Mershon refused to let the prosecution enter a variety of damaging evidence about Mr. Trump, including accusations that he has sexually assaulted women. Both of those issues were at the heart of the Court of Appeals' recent decision to overturn the sex crime conviction of Harvey Weinstein, the former Hollywood producer. Yet Mr. Kamins, who was one of the lawyers who handled Mr. Weinstein's appeal, said they would not carry the day for Mr. Trump. And Mr. Trump's lawyers are expected to challenge Justice Mershon's decisions to keep the trial in Manhattan, where the former president is deeply unpopular, and to bless Mr. Bragg's theory of the case. The law required Mr. Bragg to show that Mr. Trump caused a false entry in the records of an enterprise. Mr. Trump's lawyers might argue that no such enterprise was involved. The documents they believe belong to Mr. Trump personally, not his company. One thing I might add is that would Donald Trump be willing to have all of those business records blown wide open so that we could just see where all of those checks went? And did he treat the account in other situations and circumstances like a business account. The second crime, the election law conspiracy, provides another possible avenue for Mr. Trump's lawyers. The legal theory underpinning the prosecution included not only untested law, but a complex combination of statutes, one tucked inside another, just like a Russian nesting doll. Regardless, though, folks, I think you can look at that act that Donald Trump did to keep this information out of the public eye as affecting an election. I think most, most Americans can see that. And like I said, nobody can ever say what would have happened had Donald Trump not paid off Stormy Daniels and had this information come out in advance of the 2016 election. There's no one out there that can decidedly say that this did not affect the election. Nobody can say that, folks. Till next time.